The Magic Wand tool is by far one of the simplest and most basic tools in Photoshop for isolating an image. And I've started us off with a simple and basic image here, which is shot on white, so it will be very easy to isolate. But I'm going to use it to show you some variations of how you can use the Magic Wand tool and exactly what some of the functions do. So to start off, I'm going to introduce you to where it's at. It's W on the shortcut key, and it looks like this right here on your toolbar. So now that we have that and we click on our magic wand, we'll have our magic wand symbol here, and we can just start clicking around and magically selecting things wherever we'd like. Now, we want to isolate the gun from the background, which really isn't difficult to do at all. If I click right now, you'll notice that the magic wand tool has selected all of the white area with a tolerance of 20 which was preset up in the tolerance box and it's done a fairly good job now it's missed a few parts and those parts can be added in a couple of different ways you can add them in by going up here on your toolbar to the add to selection and simply clicking the new areas you want to add and making sure you got all the white spaces in between. Now I've got a good selection. But there's actually a simpler way of doing it if I didn't want to come up here and change my options. And that would be after I've made my main selection of the white, just hold down on the shift key and click inside the extra white areas that I need and I don't have to change any option. You'll notice that whenever you're in an unselected area and you press shift, a little plus sign will appear below the magic wand allowing you to add to your selection. Uh, conversely, if you're in an already selected section and you press alt or option on a Mac, you'll be giving a negative sign, which is a subtraction from the current selection. So in other words, I can go into something I selected, subtract it, and now it's taken away without removing all the rest of my selection. All right, let's dig into some of the other functions of the Magic Wand tool real quick. I'm going to deselect this, which, by the way, is Control-D, which is a very handy function to know. Right up here, you'll notice several options for the Magic Wand tool most of which never get touched using Photoshop, but they're really useful if you know how to adapt them. First, let's look at these four options. The new selection is your basic. I'm going to make a new selection with my magic wand. The add to selection is what I already showed you, which will allow you to continue clicking in other areas and add to your current selection. The subtract from selection is exactly what it sounds like. It's the same as pressing the alt or option key and it'll allow you to subtract from places you've already selected. And then intersect with selection is an interesting option that allows you to make two different selections that overlap and your end result is going to be only where the two uh, overlapped that will be your selection so in other words if I had intersect selected uh, and I were doing shapes and I overlapped two selections my resulting selection would be wherever those two overlapped it's usually not very useful with the magic wand tool in the kind of work that I do but it's helpful to know later on when we get into the other kinds of isolation and selection so now we're gonna go ahead and mask this out if I were to click right now I'm selecting only the immediate surrounding white area from the point that I sampled. You'll notice though here in sample size we have a drop down and in the drop down we have several different options basically just expanding our pixel selection from the surrounding image and how much we want to sample. Let me break that down for you. Alright I have created a sample area of 101 pixels. You'll notice the biggest is 101 by average. And how big this is in relation to your image just depends on the resolution of the image you're working with. 
but this is 101. So in other words, if I had 101 by average and I clicked in the center of this, it's going to select an average of all the areas within this 101 pixel radius. So in other words, it got some of the dark, it got some of the mid-tones in there, and it's going to include all those in the selection. The point sample is only the one point you click. So if I deselected that and just clicked here, you'll notice it did not select the dark areas. It only selected from that one pixel that I picked with a tolerance of 20 surrounding pixels. The tolerance is going to be the variation in the colors you're selecting. So in other words, there's going to be some lighter and darker grays here. So when I click on the pixel, it's actually using a tolerance of 20 on the surrounding color scale to pick up a tolerance of 20 around that gray that I selected. I can boost that up to, we'll say 60 in this case, for sake of example. Click again, and you'll notice now I've got quite a wider range of grays that it will select, grays and darks for this image in particular. Same would be true if you were trying to select something red. You would get a wider range of the shades of red with the higher tolerance. So I'm gonna drop that back down to where it was. Anti-alias, I'm going to leave checked for our purposes here. And contiguous is something that you can deselect and try this on your own. Click in there and you'll notice that it selected all the white in the image, not just in the area that we clicked. So with contiguous unchecked, you're going to get a selection of everything that's in that 20 range tolerance in the entire image. If I were to select it, do the same thing again, see I'm not getting the white selection in here. This is a really useful feature, but be careful because with it unselected, if you were to sample all the whites in the image, you will get the extra white spaces that a while ago we had to add, but look what else you get. You'll get anything that falls within that tolerance, which might end up cutting out some of your image everything that you see here would be removed if we masked it right now and we don't really want that to happen so I'm gonna go back and click that and leave it checked sample all layers is useful if you're working on a multi-layered document for example let me show you I've got another copy of the gun sitting down here and let's suppose we're going to sample around the little one. Now you'll notice it didn't even register that this back image was there because here I'm only selecting this one layer. If I were to sample all layers and click again, I would then get a selection of that area on all the layers, including the ones below and above the picture I'm working on. So if you want to only work on a layer, make sure that's unchecked. But if you want to work on selecting an entire image of multiple layers, then leave that checked and you're good to go. Refine Edge is very useful and it has a lot of functions that we won't go into here. But we'll have a separate tutorial for that. And Refine Edge is available on many of the selection tools, not just the magic wand. We'll go into more of that later but keep in mind that you can make fine-tuned adjustments to your selection right here with that refine edge. Now, let's go back to our main image and actually isolate it. I'm going to click. I'm going to hold shift and add here. Add this section and add this section. So now we have a good selection of white. Now, I actually want to get rid of the white and keep the gun but right now the white is what's selected so I want to select the gun the easiest way to do that is to push control shift or command shift on a Mac I that will invert your selection 
There's also other ways to do it. You can go up into your menu here and in selection you have a modify tab. You can grow, you can similar, and you can inverse right here. So if I were to click then I'm going to be inversing my selection, but it's easier to use Control Shift I or Command Shift I on a Mac. Now I have that there, and the selection looks good. Let's mask it out. I'm going to do that by using the Mask tool. I'm going to add a layer mask down here at the bottom, and there we go. I have isolated it, and it's now on a transparent background, and it's ready to be dropped over into another image.